Hello, and today we are talking finasteride for female pattern hair loss. Finasteride goes under the brand name Propecia, which is really popular for male pattern hair loss. But finasteride can be taken by the ladies too, so that's what we'll talk about today. This is a very general overview of how we treat female pattern hair loss. Generally, we start with topical Rogaine plus minus spironolactone. If that doesn't work, there's a lot of possibilities and finasteride is right at the top of our list. So we're going to talk basics. We'll talk what forms you can get, common doses, how you take it, common side effects, rare side effects, any monitoring that should be done, any precautions you may have to take. Should you get pregnant on finasteride? The answer is no. What brand names it goes under and does it actually work? So first things first, let's talk basics. Finasteride was originally developed to treat an enlarged prostate. And how it works is it blocks the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone or DHT. DHT is very damaging to hair follicles, particularly in male and female pattern hair loss. DHT, I always think of dye hair. I don't know why I always think that. But the finasteride, it can treat both male and female pattern hair loss. Like I said, the treating the male um, form of hair loss with finasteride is much more common. So what forms does it come in? It comes in tablets and it comes in topicals that you can put directly on the scalp. What are common doses? For women, generally the most common dose is five milligrams a day. For men, the most common dose, one milligram a day. And how do you take it? This is easy, plus minus food, take at the same time every day, nothing special. What are some common side effects? And for women on the low dose of just one milligram, there really are not any side effects at all. Um, finasteride, there's a lot of side effects for men, but at the low dose, not really for women. For rare side effects at the higher doses, sometimes you'll see a study that had a few women with a decreased libido, headache, breast tenderness, irregular menstruation, dizziness, but this was certainly not the norm. How do we monitor it? Plus minus blood work. We don't really monitor anything when you're on it. Precautions. So do not get pregnant on finasteride. You must use a very effective contraception. We prefer an IUD or an implant, like a Nexplanon. But we mostly use it in postmenopausal women because they're the population that has female pattern hair loss and they don't have the ability to get pregnant. So we don't have to worry about that. Pregnancy, like I said, pregnancy category X, don't get pregnant brand names. So I mentioned Propecia, which is one milligram, and that's used for alopecia in men. Another name is Proscar, which is five milligrams, and that's used for prostate, um, for prostate problems in men. Proscar, I assume the pro stands for prostate, but the car means care. I don't know what they were going for that, but Propecia is good. That's a good name. It works. And finally, the question of the hour, does it actually work? Well, for male pattern hair loss, it certainly does. Male pattern hair loss is very well studied and finasteride was approved back in 1997. There are thousands of men that were included in the research. So we know for ma male pattern hair loss, A+. Female pattern hair loss, you're not going to believe this, but there's actually very few studies looking at female pattern hair loss. I know it's crazy, but what they found in these very few studies is that one milligram a day doesn't really work, but maybe two and a half to five milligrams daily does work, but there are more studies that have to be done. All right. And that is it for female pattern hair loss and finasteride.